Well, it's time to begin. Let's stand and sing hymn number 146. We'll sing the first and last verses. 146, It is well with my soul. Let's try uh, 229 then. 229. This world is not my home. First and last verses. service and of course we're still recording and that'll be posted later um, and uh, I think we will go back to a live stream uh, for this evening service and uh, then Wednesday will be a recorded as I'll be out of town uh, but it'll be posted uh, Wednesday and, and you can watch it at that time uh, for our Wednesday evening uh, Bible study uh, next Sunday morning we'll also be in person again again that is, uh, uh, at, if you, things are slowly opening back up in Ohio and restaurants will be opening, I think, um, later uh, this week or next week, a little bit, uh, in a very limited way this week and I think a little bit more next week. And so things are, are going little by little uh, as, as you feel safe to come back to church services, we welcome you to do so. And of course, we'll be observing some um, some distancing uh, during during the services before and after as well. So please uh, uh, be aware of that. Um, <clears throat> I want to remind you, God will get us through this. And our service times um, again next Sunday morning will also be at 10:45 uh, tonight at 7 and Wednesday night at 7:30. I want to remind you to pray for for uh, the preachers. Uh, this month is still Brother Ken Lance from uh, Calvary Baptist Church in Bucyrus, and uh, so we'll be praying for him for the rest of this month. Uh, last month was Brother Dornbeer, and the month before that, Brother Bray, and uh, you're welcome to continue to pray for them and and add uh, just keep adding a pastor to each one, but at least pray for the, the pastor of the month, and I will be texting him every Sunday and reminding him that we're praying for him. If you would like a reminder to pray, let me know. I'll add you to that list and text you as well. And it'll just say pray. If you have any questions uh, or prayer requests, please feel free to uh, call me or, or text me on my cell, uh, 740 244 We had originally scheduled a boys' activity day for June 6th. We will have to... Uh, uh, take a second look at that and see um, 
see how things are going at that point, and we may need to reschedule that uh, for a little bit later. Let things uh, uh, let things recover a little bit more. Uh, but uh, we do still plan on on having that hopefully, and uh, but it may not be as early in the summer as we thought uh, we were going to be able to do that. See, that's our announcements. I do want to do one more song. Uh, let's go with 230. Farther along, let's stand together for first and last verses of 230. at the men and let the mothers listen in uh, a little bit and um, but uh, anyhow Proverbs 1 verse 8 let's read that uh, out loud together ready my son hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother and let's pray our Heavenly Father thank you for your word Lord thank you for uh, not just giving it to us but preserving it perfect without error, that we can trust it, we can read it, study it, and know that uh, we can base our lives on it and not ever have to worry about that. I pray that you would bless the time that we spend in your word now, that your Holy Spirit would give us ears, that we might hear what you have to say to us, and Lord, that we might be helped, that we might be strengthened and, and drawn closer to you. Lord, if there's anyone listening uh, and, and watching that doesn't know Christ as their Savior, we especially pray that uh, they would come to Know him as Savior and, and join your family, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I want us to look at a few other verses here in the book of Proverbs. I want to read this verse again, and then we'll go to chapter 6. But I want to, The Bible says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. I'll turn over to chapter 6, verse 20, where the Bible says, My son... Keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. And now let's jump down to uh, chapter 23. And verse 22. The Bible says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. It's, it's interesting, dads have a... Uh, have a way of commanding their children's attention. And whether or not they put it to good use or, or use it at all, 
that's the question. Uh, my dad had a way of, he, he didn't even have to speak a word. He would just look at me in a certain way, and I knew I better just stiffen up and, and start being still and, and keep my mouth shut and, and smile and just whatever it was I was doing to stop doing that. And, and Dad put, I, I believe he, he made good use of it. Uh, at least I felt he was making good use of it. <laughs> and, but I, I don't believe he, he abused it. He never did it without me deserving it. And uh, I often said, I don't, I don't ever remember getting spanked where I didn't deserve it. I remember a lot of times I deserved it and didn't get it. Uh, but I was never going to admit that at the time. <laughs> And uh, uh, fortunately, God was watching. God had a way of, uh, of working things around and, and uh, keeping me from getting away with things. Um, but, you know, the Bible not only tells us to use that power. I believe that's a, uh, something that God has given us. And, and, and shame on the dads that, that fail to use that power for good and for right. Uh, the, the Bible says that uh, if you leave a child to himself, that that child will bring shame to its mother. And, and so by a dad not engaging and using the power and the authority that God has given him, he is setting that child up to bring, to live a life of shame to his mother. And, and it, it's, a, it's a neglect in the worst possible way. So the Bible not only tells us to use that, and here it's, it's an example in, in the whole book of Proverbs, all throughout that book, you see it written from a father's point of view to uh, his son and getting that boy's attention and giving him instruction. And, and so the pattern, the example that's given us as dads is you need to get your kid's attention. And once you have their attention, you, you need to start pouring instruction into their lives. Um, I was talking to my wife last night and, and um, I said, you know, I really appreciate having been able to travel with my dad. Uh, I, I really appreciate the, the times when he said, uh, I want you to come with me. And most of the time it was during the summer months, and I thought I, thought I was being sent along. Mom would say, you're going with your dad. He's going to visit these churches uh, that support us. And, and uh, Mom didn't like to travel a whole lot. She was good for about three hours in the car, and then she was done. And uh, she could handle a little bit more than that, but, but that was a, uh, that'd be a long trip for her. And, and, and so she didn't like to do that a whole lot of, of eight, nine, ten hours at a time, and, and sometimes longer. She could, but it wasn't something that, uh, uh, that she had. So she said, uh, you go along with him. And I thought my job, the reason I was going along was to keep him awake, uh, sometimes if, if driving late into the night, and, uh, and that was part of it, but I, I, in retrospect, I think, you know what, that was, uh, that was a lot of my dad not neglecting me. Um, and, and I see there's, a, boy, there's a lot of kids just trying to get their dad's attention these days, and they'll do anything. And if they do something good and it doesn't get their dad's attention, well, they'll try something different than good. And, and they'll try something bad, and if that doesn't do it, then they'll, they'll, it just keeps going up the ladder. And whatever dad doesn't like, well, I'll do, I'll do that. Maybe that'll get his attention. And, and I, I didn't really, I was just, I had mischief. It wasn't that I was crying for attention. I had a lot of energy that needed to be directed. And I read one day that the uh, symptoms of attention deficit hyperactivity, I said, that was me. Or maybe that is me. And one of them was, you know, in class, you sit and look out the window and daydream. And, and uh, the, one of the problems was I heard somebody call it homework, and I thought that was literal. You're supposed to take this home. And so while I was, instead of doing it at school and getting 90% of it done at school, I'd take all of it home. And while I was at school, I'd be looking out the window and imagining things and just daydreaming and, and, and watching what was going on outside. And, and uh, then I take all that work home and have two or three hours worth of homework at the end of the day. Uh, but uh, uh, anyways, uh, easily distracted. There I go again. Uh, but, but I never had to vie for my dad's attention. I never felt like I had to do that because he was always saying, hey, come with me. Hey, help me out with this. Hey, pick this up. Put that. Uh, let's take this apart. Let me teach you how to 
tear down a carburetor, which is not a whole lot of useful information today unless you're working on a lawnmower. Uh, that's about the only thing you can find with a carburetor on it anymore. Uh, uh, unless, it's, unless it's a very old, your husband's getting more and more uh, uh, difficult to find something to, that he wants to, he said, I don't want, want anything fuel injected, I just want it carbureted. And they're getting more and more rare today. Uh, but uh, here's how to change a flat tire, and here's how to, uh, we would uh, uh, clean our spark plugs out and recap them and put them back in and get, get another many miles out of them. And, and there were some times, depending where we were going to be traveling in Columbia, we put different jets in the carburetor. He said, we're going to be up in high altitude, and these jets that are in there now are just not. And so I learned how to do those things. And, and it saved me, here's how to change brakes on a car. And, and it saved me a lot of money. Not that he was just kind of teaching me handy things, but no. He was, give, he was giving me attention, and he was giving me instruction. And, and that was a good thing. And dads have, God has given us that ability, and we ought to make sure that we use it. Because if we don't, we are producing children that will grow up into adults that are going to cause shame to their moms. And so the Bible doesn't just tell us to use it. We see all through here the book of Proverbs where fathers saying, Hey, son, look at me. Listen to me. Give me your attention. I've got something to teach you. That's the example that we're given. Look at uh, chapter 4, verse 3. Because the Bible doesn't just tell us to do it. It also gives us some guidance into how to do so. In, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 3, it says, For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Now there's a contrast here that's given. If, if I may paraphrase this, one way of looking at this, uh, at this verse would be, my dad looked at me and said, that's my boy. Isn't that what he said? For I was my father's son. And he says, my mom looked at me and said, my little baby. <laughs> and that's just, that's a, a different way that, that moms and dads look at their kids. And, and it's not that one is right and the other one is wrong. It's just, it, this is the way dads look at their boys. Come on, boy. And moms look at their kids, and, and it's a different thing. It's a different, it's a different perspective. Dads and moms look at their kids differently. Dads say, all right, son, be bold. And mom says, be careful. And I'm not trying to diminish that. I'm just saying that's, that's a different, uh, uh, dad says, be daring. And she says, don't hurt yourself. And dad says, you can do it. Go after it. And she says, I'm afraid to look. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh. If, if we're not careful as dads, if we don't purposefully give a direction there, then what happens is the child, and especially the son, will grow up to think that mom's instructions and mom's rules are an obstacle to be avoided in order for me to live my life. See, dad says, go get him. Come on, go out there and, and, and grab that tiger by the tail and go after it. And mom says, she, she's cautioning and, and advising restraint and, and carefulness and everything. And if the dad doesn't, doesn't say, listen to your mom, then the boy says, well, mom is something that has to be overcome in order for me to get what I'm supposed to get. And not, not that he's going after something bad or evil or wicked, but he says, in order for me to be successful, I have to get around mom. I have to somehow avoid, I have to overcome, it's kind of like the Democrats in the Constitution. They view the Constitution as an obstacle to get what they want to get. Somehow we've got to get rid of that old document because it is hindering us from accomplishing socialism in this country. And, and just, uh, uh, we just, what can we do about that nasty old Second Amendment? If we could just get rid of that, the whole rest of the thing would collapse. What, what can we do? We'll, 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 uh, uh, we'll get judges in place that will that'll tear the thing up. And uh, they did that for many years, and now the tide has turned a little bit on that. But uh, uh, I like what one of the Supreme Court justices said recently. He said, it's about time we took on another Second Amendment case. <laughs> and I'm paraphrasing that a little bit. They said, this one right here that was brought before us, we can't really hear that one. But we've been manipulated, and we've got to put an end to that. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, if you've been following about how 
New York and everything rework this. But listen, moms are not to be an obstacle to be overcome in order for life to be lived. Turn with me to chapter 29. And we'll look at verse 15 here. Proverbs 29, verse 15 says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. So when a dad is not instructing, when a dad is not correcting, when a, get, when a dad is not guiding, when a dad is not involved in the child's life, and he's not giving instructions. He's not paying attention. He's just kind of leaving that kid off to his own and, and to chart his own direction, to chart his own way. Um, then what happens is, as I said, that, that kid is being left to himself and he brings his mother to shame. As dads, we must not neglect to use that power and use the authority that God has given us. We must put it to use, and we must seek in the Bible and, 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 and allow it, and not just allow it, but pursue it to guide us in the guidance that we give to our children. In chapter 22 and verse 6, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go. That's a commandment. We're commanded to train our children in the way they should go. Now, God has never given us a commandment that he hasn't equipped us to fulfill that commandment. And I think the book of, I don't think, I know the book of Proverbs is full of that equipment to fulfill that commandment. Now, there's, you can find wisdom and guidance on child rearing all throughout the Bible. But it's most heavily concentrated in the book of Proverbs. And, and, and I don't know of any other topic or subject that requires more wisdom than the rearing of children. And so the, the Bible will, will guide us. And, and we need, you know, okay, God, you commanded me to do this. I'm going to need your help in doing it. And God says, I gave you a book. And when you read that book, and when you study that book, and when you ask me for help, my Holy Spirit will, will teach you and tell you what it means and, and open your eyes in the lives of your children as to how to apply this teaching and that training. I'm not saying I'm perfect about this at all. But I'm saying we have a perfect book available to us, and we ought to get in there. And, and, and there's so much I know about, about rearing kids now. Uh, I can't wait to, uh, to tell other people how to do it. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyhow, there's, there's a lot that, that I've learned. There's some things that, that I didn't do right. By God's grace, he... he he met up the difference, and, and there's, there's things I did do right, and then found in the Bible, oh, I did that right, and, and didn't know I was at the time, and, and thank God for that. But the book of Proverbs is full of God-given God wisdom in addressing this command for us to train up a child in the way they should go. Now, I'm going to focus on, on one area today, and <clears throat> I don't have uh, much longer to go. I'll, I'll let you out uh, a little bit early today. Uh, but turn with me over to chapter 31, last, last chapter in the book of Proverbs. And we'll start reading verse 26. And this is talking about a, a, a virtuous woman, the 31st chapter of Proverbs. Uh, in verse 10 says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Now, it's, it's not... Super well known. Most people think diamonds are the most uh, costly of the precious stones, and they're not. Pound for pound, rubies cost more than diamonds. Uh, <clears throat> and it says, a virtuous woman is worth even more than that. Now, down in uh, verse 26, it says, She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up, and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her.
I want to encourage dads this morning to use their God-ordained power and authority to direct their children, especially the sons, to be obedient to mom. We saw two verses early on when we first started this morning where the father is saying, My son, obey me and obey your mom. And unless kids are instructed to do this, they'll obey dad. He seems to have a different, a different tone in his voice. It's more likely to be booming than, than the mom's voice. Hers is a higher pitch. He's, he's got a little bit more thunder in his voice. And he's, uh, he has a harsher look to him or has a harsher look available to him. And, and uh, uh, you know, mom's a pretty one. Dad's a mean looking one. <laughs> and so that it's, it's, it's easy for kids to naturally not take mom as seriously. And God directs the man, God directs the dad. He said, listen. Tell your kids, get their attention and get them to mind you. And while you're getting them to mind you, don't forget to tell them they better mind their mother also. I've, I've told this story before. I, there was, there was a, a, a short period where I was coming home from work and, and my wife was just at her wits end. And what's going on? Well, the kids are not obeying. And I said, I'm tired of coming home to this. <laughs> No man wants to come home to his wife at her wit's end and, and, and just frustrated and aggravated. That's, he doesn't want to come home. Now, he wants to come home, but he wants, he wants a, a different uh, uh, welcome than that. And, and so I, I gathered them all together. I said, now listen, while I'm gone, you got to do everything she says. That's my rule. If you don't do everything she says, you're disobeying my rule. She is going to correct you while I'm gone, and when I get back, since you broke my rule, I'll correct you. They, they caught on real quick. Real quick. All they had to do was find out that I was going to correct them too. And they said, so this, if I break this rule, mom said do this, if I don't do that, she's going to spank me, and that, that's two spankings I'm going to get. They said, it's not worth not making the bed over two spankings. <laughs> it's not worth not doing that over two. Now one, because she can't spank as hard as dad can. And, 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 and moms look at their kids and my tender beloved. And dads look at their kids and say, rub some dirt in that. You'll be all right. Get up. And there's not that, that sweet compassion from the dad that they get from the mom. Since they get that sweet compassion from the mom that they don't get from the dad, their tendency is to not take mom as seriously. I know girls are a little bit different in this area. It's not as pronounced, but boys, it's very pronounced. And so the dad must purposefully get that boy's attention. Now, don't neglect the daughters, but he's got to especially get that boy's attention. Grab him by the cheeks and make him look at you if you have to. Empty his hands out, make him fold his fingers together and get his attention eyeball to eyeball right there where he can, where he can not just smell your breath, but feel it on his face if that's what it takes. And say, now you will, you will obey your mother. You will do what, what she tells you to do. And, and the Bible tells us, We've got to use our God-given power, our God-given authority to direct our children and especially our sons to be obedient to their mothers. The Bible mentioned it in three different verses here. That principle was, was laid out and they're not verses spread out all over the 66 different books. They're very in, in very close proximity to each other. That means not only is it important, it's very, very important. Don't ever let your kids look at mom as an obstacle that must be dealt with in order to get on with life. At the end of the last half of uh, verse 28 here in chapter 31, it says, her husband also, means he rises up and calls her blessed. And he praiseth her. So her husband calls her blessed, and he praiseth her. So 
So uh, as I said before, while I'm going to be instructing dads today, this is also something moms can listen in and see the expectations that the Bible puts on your plate. As I said, God helps us get started with some things. He says, and he praises her. He praiseth her. And then God says, let me give you some things, get you started on that. It's almost like God knows we're clueless sometimes. Because we are, really. Verse 26, let's, let's start there. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. So men, that's an area we can praise our wives on. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. Hey kids, listen to your mom. She's very wise. We need to get their attention and say, no, you need to listen to your mom. There's a lot of wisdom in what she has to say. Instead of saying, don't listen to her. She's always overly cautious. She's always too careful. We'll, we'll, just, shh, we'll just get around here and, and, uh, uh, and, and she'll be okay. It's, there's wisdom there. And, and it ought to be a different thing. Just because she has a different vantage point, a different point of view, a different way of approaching the child, a different view of that child, doesn't mean that one is right and one is wrong. While the child may, may enjoy one more than the other, that doesn't mean that the other is of less value. And God is saying here, dads, get your kids' attention and make sure they understand the value that is in their moms. Now, moms, make sure you have value in you. That's the other side of that coin. It's like when, when uh, 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 men like to go to, I think it's in Hebrews, where it says that Sarah called Abraham Lord. You say, look at that, wife. You're supposed to call me Lord. You're supposed to reverence me. And they like, they like that idea but maybe they're not so fond of the idea of not sitting around on the couch in a tank top shirt and boxer shorts, scratching themselves and burping. Be someone that can be reverenced. You want respect, be respectable. I, I, I remember, I don't know, it's been, I remember stuff from 15, 20 years ago and not so much day before yesterday. Uh, I remember preaching and mentioning that on a Sunday uh, Sunday night. I said, he's not falling asleep on the couch and drool going down his face and everything else. <laughs> and I saw two kids looking up at their dad. <laughs> and he was scheduled to be baptized that evening. And he said, how did you know I, I fell asleep like that this afternoon? I said, I didn't until you just said it. He said, you said that in the, in the sermon my kids were looking at me saying, Dad, uh, that, that happened to you today. <laughs> Uh, but listen, so, so when, when, the, when the dad tells the kids, hey, listen to your mom, she's got wisdom. Well, ladies, don't be foolish. So that give your husband something to brag upon you about. Say, so, well, I just, I don't have a whole lot of wisdom. You know, the Bible says that there's all sorts of formulas for it in the book of Proverbs. Well, I don't do any of those things. That's why you don't have a lot of wisdom. This is, a, this is a neat cause and effect of wisdom in the Bible. If you look in the book of Proverbs, it says the wise person does this. So that means if you do that, you will be considered in God's eyes a wise person. Uh, if you don't have your own wisdom, borrow someone else's. Find a godly woman and borrow her wisdom. The Bible commands the older women to teach the younger women. And I don't, I don't think that has anything to do with age. I think that has to do with spiritual maturity. The spiritually mature women are supposed to be teaching the younger ladies that have not, maybe they, the younger ladies in Christ, they might be older than that spiritually mature woman. But they say, you know what? That lady's been saved uh, 10, 20 years longer than I have been saved. She can teach me something about Christianity. She can teach me something about being a godly wife and a godly woman. And, and so it, you might be uh, 20, 30 years older uh, than somebody, but just newly saved, and here's somebody that's been saved for 10 or 20 years, and they know more about Christianity than you do. It would be wise to go to them and say, could you teach me something in the Bible about being a Christian wife, about being a Christian mom? 
I don't know. It's, it's, it's a wise thing to realize how wise you're not. Solomon became king, and God used Solomon to write most of the book of Proverbs. And he became king, and God paid him a visit and said, Solomon, I'll give you anything you want. Ask me one thing. I'll get Whatever you ask for, I'll give it to you. And Solomon said, hmm, I'm going to need some wisdom. And God said, that is a very wise request. You were wise enough to know you lacked wisdom. So if you say, I just don't have a whole lot of wisdom, that's a very wise, you're starting out good. But don't stop there. What did Solomon do? He said, I, I don't have a lot of wisdom. He said, could I have some wisdom? So if you don't have a whole lot of wisdom, it's good that you recognize you don't have a whole lot of wisdom. Go after it. Ask it. God says, uh, uh, if any of you lack, lack wisdom, let him ask. That's all. Ask. The Bible also says, he that winneth souls is wise. You got a big decision? Go soul winning. I don't see the connection. I don't either. That doesn't mean it's not there. God says, go soul winning. Go tell somebody about Jesus. And, and uh, well, I, I just don't see how that'll work. We don't have to see how it'll work. All we have to do is believe that it will. We can go so and say, Lord, I told three people about Jesus today. I need some wisdom. God says, go tell three more. Or that's a, you're going to need a lot of wisdom. Go tell 40 more. I, I, I don't know if it works that way or not. I don't know how flipping that switch. I don't know all the details, how the protons and electrons go through the wires and charge the lights up and make them come on. And I don't, But I know that it does work. I don't know how everything in the Bible works, but if God said this is what works, I know that it does work. So, ladies, don't be foolish. If you need wisdom, borrow it. Go to somebody that, that has some of it and get it from the men. Praise her wisdom. Praise her wisdom. Look at verse 26. The, uh, uh, the rest of it says, And in her tongue is the law of kindness. There's another thing we can praise. In her tongue is the law of kindness. Your mom's a kind person. I remember my mom saying, if you can't say something nice, duck. Mm -hmm. No, she didn't say that. <laughs> That's something a dad would say. <laughs> a mom would say, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Just keep your mouth shut. That was the law of kindness. My dad never told me that. My mom told me that. I don't know why she said it so many times. <laughs> but that was something I would hear my mother say. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. Don't say anything. What a, what a great rule. I think kids are more likely to learn kindness from their mom. A wise dad says, this is not my strong suit. You need to listen to your mom, what she says about that. Well, uh, dad's more likely to say, give him a fat lip, son. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll tell you something dad told me. When, when we came back to the States from Columbia, it was the uh, middle of sixth grade. I don't know why we never came back in the summertime, but it was, it was middle of sixth grade. And, uh, and he realized, you know, I'd been in a Christian school in Columbia, and up here I was not going to be. And he said, in fact, it was uh, the first time I would have been in public school since first grade. <clears throat> and so here I was going into sixth grade. And even at first grade, I only went, started in February, so it was just half a year, January or February or so. And, and he said, now listen, he said, I don't expect, I, I, I don't expect you to start a fight. He said, I don't want you starting any fights. He said, but somebody might start a fight with you. And he said, if they start it, punch them. <laughs> and he said, but if I hear you started it, then you're in big trouble. And, and uh, uh, it seemed like everybody was bigger than me that, that tried to start something with me. So I, and they, I didn't want to punch them. Uh, but that was, that was what dad told me to do. Now, mom would never have told me to do that. 
She gave me a lot of comfort when I came home from being picked on at school all day. Uh, but uh, uh, she had the law of kindness in her. Verse 27. Now, the other side of that is, ladies, make sure you have the law of kindness in you. Again, you say, I wish my husband would say better things about me. Give him good things to say about you. Verse 27, the first part of that verse says, She looketh well to the ways of her household. So here's something a dad should be able to say about his wife. Uh, hey kids, look how well your mom keeps this place. She works hard at this. She, look how well she, if it were up to me, all you boys would have pink underwear. Because I'd put the underwear in with the OSU sweatshirt and that would be that. But your mom takes very good care that that's not the case. So ladies, make sure you separate the whites from the darks. <laughs> so that the colors don't bleed through. But listen, she, she, she looketh well. She, uh, she looketh well to the ways of her household. The ways that things are run in the household. The mom should be very aware and very, very involved in how the household is run. So the schedule, some, some households have real strict schedules. Monday is laundry day, Tuesday is this day, and Wednesday is this day, and, third, and, and some households have this day is going to the store day, and this day, and, and, and some are, are more flexible because there's too many other influences that come in to change things, and, and, but, but moms are the ones that usually are in charge of setting those ways up. Whether it be real rigid and set in stone or whether it be we're going to learn to be flexible because of all the outside and changes and other things that are going on. Uh, it's usually the mom that's in charge of that. And the dad should remind the kids, hey, look how well with all that's going on. Look at all that she's had to deal with and she works very hard on this home. The, the rest of the verse goes on and says... Uh, um, and eateth not the bread of idleness. I think that's a way of saying she's not lazy. She's not lazy. Because it's, it's easy for kids to get involved in, in their own lives, and their own things, get very self-focused, self-centered. And what is it? I, I'm the one that does everything around here. Because they're, they've been given chores and things to do, responsibilities to do. And I, I do it all. I've heard, I don't know if I've heard my kids say that, but I have heard kids say that. i got to do everything around here. Uh, no. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you might do some things, but compared to your mother, you're the one that's lazy. No, no, i got to do it all. i got to make my own bed. i got to brush my own teeth. I gotta wash my own face. It says here, here's an area in which dads can praise moms. She is not the bread of idleness. Verse 28 says, Her children arise up and call her blessed. I think dads have a big part in that. Now, the mom gives them a reason to do so, but the dads ought to direct them to do so. And the, the pattern is that, that the mom should give reason so that dad can honestly say these things, but the dad should be the one that is directing them to see these things. And Now, say something good about your mom. I saw... a. Uh, uh, I think it was a YouTube video, and it, it had the family eating. And at the end of the at the end of the meal, the dad instructed the kids. Now, if you enjoyed the meal, thank your mom for it. While you by taking your plate to the sink and doing the dishes. And what was he doing? He was guiding them to acknowledge the work that she had already done. I thought, wow, that's a good idea. I get all my sermons off YouTube. Uh, 
No, but, but there are a few things where I've seen, and I've said, I wish I'd have, I wish I'd have known that 20 years ago. Uh, what a neat family tradition that is. And, and uh, uh, what a great thing. There's, there's another one where uh, when it's a person's birthday, everybody goes around and says something good about that person. They call it a birthday blessing. And that's exactly what it is. A blessing means to say something good about somebody. When you bless somebody, it's you saying something good. You say something bad about somebody, you're cursing them. You're never going to make it. You, why would you? That's a curse. You have pronounced a curse on somebody when you say that. You're worthless. That's cursing somebody. We think cursing is, is four-letter words. That's, that's not the Bible definition of cursing. And so the kids arise up and they call her blessed. They say, boy, our mom is blessed. Everybody says good things about our mom. Her husband also. I think it's a dad's job. I know it's a dad's job. The Bible shows the pattern. Son, give me your attention. Your mom is a very special lady. Really? Oh, yeah. Look at all the people that hold her in high regard. Look at how many people admire her. Look at all the hard work she does around here. And look at the wisdom that she has. I would recommend for the men to, to look through the Bible for other, other things. See, I, I just can't think of very many. We'll start with these. And as you read your Bible, God will show you and God will direct you. Say, God, show me other things in the Bible about this topic, of how I ought to talk about my wife, how I should uh, uh, interact with my kids about my wife. Motherhood's not for the, the wimpy. It's not for the lazy. It's a... Uh, uh, it's a very it's, it's one of the highest callings right behind wifehood if that's a word at Cardington we can make up words yeah. I think that's the first highest calling that was the first calling God gave Eve was to be a wife the kids came later but they did come And the type of home that exists, exists to a very high degree because of the mother, the mom in that household. Dad's gone most of the time. But the time that he's there, now here's, here's the danger. Because dad is gone most of the time, the danger is that while he's there, he wants to get all that he can from those kids for himself. While well, mom has struggled with them throughout the day, and he comes in, I just want to have fun with them. Well, I, I, I understand that want, but it's important that those kids still be guided and directed very purposefully. And one of the most important areas in which they should be guided and directed should be towards mom. Let's stand. We'll close with a word of prayer this morning. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for its instruction, its guidance. Now, God, help us to follow it and apply it in our lives. Help us dads to, to look for ways in which we can, we can strengthen the position of our children's moms. And God, help the moms to live in such a way that that praise is is rightful, rightfully placed. We pray that you'll watch over us, continue to, to protect us. We pray that you'll bless your word. We ask these things now in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord bless and keep.